It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we've got a beer from Arbor Ales and it's a can of their Tinny the Welder. It's an 8.5% ABV double India Pale Ale brewed with Equinox, Simcoe and Summit hops by the bucket load. It's a 568 milliliter one pint can. Look at that. I'm a massive fan of double IPAs. Thank you very much to the lovely viewer who sent me this can of beer tonight. And let's get it open into a glass, see what we get. Nice bit of smoke on the can opening. Beer in the glass then. Three finger white head. Good levels of carbonation. It's amber stroke straw coloured. Nice and hazy. Lovely. Look at the carbonation rolling up the side of the glass there. Can you see that? That's lovely. Let's get the aroma. Can I be honest though before we get into this beer review? I'm kind of hoping it's a West Coast style IPA. Kind of hoping. I like a double IPA. I like a double New England IPA, don't get me wrong. But I just love that smashing great big wall of a hops that you get from a West Coast style double IPA. Here's to hoping. Let's get the aroma. Oh, it might be. It might be a West Coast. If you're new to the channel, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, New England IPAs, West Coast style IPAs, I'll get to all of that later on. Bear with me. Grapefruit, orange peel, mango, fleshy blood orange. Oh, it's got all of it, this one. Oh, yeah. Really good, really good. Lovely, really hoppy. It seems really hoppy. Let's dive in. Cheers. Oh, it's really interesting. Oh, that's really, 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 really interesting. It's I stood stood on my toes then. I was I was standing on my toe as I am now, standing on my toes. I had a mouthful of this beer, and I just continued to rise up on my toes. It was one of those beers where I was waiting for the smash, the smash of the West Coast. It didn't come. It didn't come. This is more of one of those double dry hopped. I'll explain all this in a moment. Double dry hopped style IPAs. So let's just pick the flavours. That's what we got in the middle. Sweetness, a little bit of bitterness. Mango, passion fruit, grapefruit, orange peel, flashy blood orange. That, those, those sets of lovely flavours. Punch bowl fruits, if you like. You get a sense of it being a double IPA. It's drinkable, it's refreshing, but it's got a nice body. Maybe they've added, maybe a touch of oats to the beer. Let's have a look. Oh, wow. Oh yeah, the, the English is in big writing, um, and then everything else is in small. I was just seeing if there was any any oats in the beer. There's no oats in the beer. Uh, yeah, so you get a sense of that mouthfeel, that big 8.5% ABV. Uh, when you want to get the ABV up to 8.5%, anything over kind of 
five, six, you start to taste or you start to get a mouthfeel, a, a thicker mouthfeel on the beer, which you have today. Carbonation pushes the beer on the inside of the mouth. It's a really, really, really nice beer. Now, let's talk about what I was talking about earlier on. Let's start off, we'll work backwards. Let's start off with a double dry hop. So, a West Coast style IPA, traditional West Coast of America style IPA, uh, what they would do, they put a lot of hops in the boil. When you add a lot of hops to the boil, you bring out the bitterness of the hop, and that goes into the beer. And as a bit of a, somebody who really, who grew up, grew up, that's not the right word, who has for the last 10 years been drinking some of these kind of 100 IBUs. Let me get you a, a, a bottle with a 100 IBU kind of limit on it. Uh, this is called Crazy Mike. This is what used to be a double IPA. They used to advertise, especially in Poland, that it was 100 IBUs. That's international bittering units. And that would wallop you around the face, exactly like Crazy Mike is doing there, but to his own fists. Um, this beer was ready to smash you around the face in terms of bitterness. It was smashingly bitter. And people got used to it. People like me got used to it. So, a different style of beer then started to creep in to the world of beer. And that was the New England IPA, the Nipah. The first people to brew the Nipah. Yeah, I've got it in my... In my, in my the silver can of beer. The Alchemist, the Alchemist, Heady Topper, was probably the first kind of New England IPA where it was all about the flavour of the hop, the juiciness of the hop. And that was all done in the fermenter. So the beer went from the boil, cooled down, went into the fermenter, and then they started throwing all sorts of hops into the fermenter. Bang, 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 into the fermenter. That's where you get your big, juicy, massive amounts of beautiful kind of hop flavours. And you don't get the bitterness. It's a bit like when you make a cup of tea and you leave the tea bag in the, in the cup for too long and then it ends up your tea's more or less black. You know, it's really strong and astringent, isn't it? That's, it's, it's more or less the same thing with beer. If you were to put a tea bag in a cold glass of water. I've never tried it myself. Um, I'm not sure what would happen, but maybe you get some different flavours from the tea. It's a similar thing. So going back to it, New England IPAs, this style of beer was becoming very, very fashionable and it kind of like, it, it's synonymous now with, with beer. It's like most IPAs now. A big and bold and juicy and 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 now they do double versions of it, double IPAs that have, that have been probably triple dry hopped. Let's rate it. I really like it. It's jammy, it's tart, like sweetness is nice. Carbonation pushes the beer on the inside of the mouth. Loads of flavour coming in. I just miss that thump on the back end, I really do. I mean, I really do miss that massive thump of a, of the bitterness on the back end, but it's not to be, it's not to be. Let's rate it, let's rate it for what it is and be fair. Uh, it's not about me, is it really? It's about, it's about the beer and how the beer is supposed to be, supposed to be made and drunk. So I like it enough to give it a Stone the Crows 9 out of 10. I'd need more fingers if it had a thumping bitterness. It's a ter pardon me, <laughs> terrific beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom! Cheers.